Introduction. Count me in as one who is certainly thankful for Matt Walsh's recent documentary, What is a Woman? If for no other reason than it forces the question further out into the open, instead of our culture simply being force-fed answers from the rabid and drooling left. Now, this last week, Matt engaged with Macy Gray, who publicly flipped on the question, initially arguing for the traditional biological definition of a woman, and then, after the utterly predictable backlash, publicly repenting and conforming to the leftist catechism that, quote, being a woman is a vibe. If you, in your heart, feel that that's what you are, then that's what you are, regardless of what anyone says or thinks, unquote. After pointing out the complete irrationality of the flip-flop, some, also predictably, called Matt heartless and cold for piling on. To which Matt replied, quote, Sorry, but women who publicly renounce the definition of woman for fear of mean comments from trans activists deserve all the scorn they get. That kind of gutless cowardice is exactly what got us into this position in the first place, unquote. At which point, things got even more interesting than usual since J.K. Rowling chimed in, defending Gray, at least in part, due to the intensity of the backlash. She wrote, quote, Endless death and rape threats, threats of loss of livelihood, employers targeted, physical harassment, family address posted online with picture of bomb-making manual aren't mean comments. If you don't yet understand what happens to women who stand up on this issue, back off, unquote. Matt replied, again, on Twitter, quote, I respect the courage you've shown on this issue, at J.K. Rowling, but many people have simply caved to the demands of trans activists and completely surrendered truth and reality to them. The cowards are also villains in this story. They need to be held accountable, unquote. To which Rowling replied, and your film did a good job exposing the incoherence of gender identity theory and some of the harms it's done. Many institutions I used to admire have uncritically embraced this dogma, but I reserve my ire for them rather than shouting coward at individual women, unquote. And so a bunch of folks were up in a tizzy and a dither about the whole thing. Is marriage a vibe? What I want to talk about here is illustrated in this exchange, but raises some very important related questions. But let's have one more tweet from Matt Walsh from back on July 1st, 2021, in which he wrote, There will never be unity. One side of the divide thinks that children should go to drag shows, women have penises, infanticide is good, and all white people are racist. There's no common ground between us. I despise their worldview and have no respect for those who ascribe to it. Unquote. Matt is exactly right. Only I want to press it into one additional corner that he leaves unaddressed. And the issue is eugenics, homosexuality, and marriage. Dave Rubin has publicly described his buying of eggs, his selection of various characteristics for his children, and his intentional plan to raise his children without a mother in the context of his so-called, quote, marriage to another man. And my question to Dave, Jordan Peterson, Matt Walsh, Jeremy Boring, or anyone else at the Daily Wire who cares to answer is this, what is marriage? Is marriage just a vibe? If you in your heart feel that that's what you are, then that's what you are, regardless of what anyone says or thinks, right? Or is the public acceptance of homosexuality and homosexual mirage the kind of gutless cowardice that got us into this position in the first place? I mean, if you feel in your heart that you are married to a small shrubbery, are you? And if you limit marriage to an arrangement between sentient beings, on what basis? By what standard? And what about highly educated chimpanzees? Of course, Biblically and traditionally, marriage has been understood as the covenantal union between one man and one woman for life with the goal of bringing children into the world and raising them. Only a man and a woman can become one flesh. Only a man and a woman can be married. Only a man and a woman can conceive and bear children. Everything else is a sham. Everything else is pretending. Everything else is going along with irrationality and incoherence. And everything else is an insult to the genuine article. The Daily Wire, and Marriage Drag. I wrote recently that Jeremy Boring's Razor ad was a valiant attempt at taking on the corporate woke mob, but that it failed because it embraced some of the very proto-woke assumptions that got us to this point in the first place. You cannot have traditional America without traditional marriage. 
You cannot have traditional morals and values and freedom apart from reality, objective truth, and reason. And the very same irrationality that the Daily Wire and Matt Walsh want to rightly mock and deconstruct in trans ideology is at work in claiming that real dudes act like pimps buying and selling arm candy, like Jeremy Boring did in his Razor ad. I noted it briefly in that article, but it really bears saying again, you can't object to buying and selling eggs if you don't object to buying and selling the sexualized bodies of women. That's what got us here in the first place. You cannot admit the objectification and commodification of women's bodies in prostitution, porn, swimsuit models, pinups, or eggs, or breast milk, and then reason in a straight line, objecting to the modification of male bodies into female bodies. If you can buy and sell them, or parts of them, then you have already dehumanized them. You have already stripped them of their fixed, transcendent value and reduced them to their component parts. So why can't you just play Mr. Potato Head with them? I agree with Matt completely. There can be no unity between rationality and irrationality. There can be no common ground between those who think, quote, that children should go to drag shows, women have penises, and infanticide is good, unquote. And those of us who know the difference between boys and girls. But what Matt and the Daily Wire need to grapple with is whether it is actually a marriage when two men say, till death do us part, and begin sodomizing one another. Is that a one flesh union? Is it marriage? The Christian faith and nature itself have universally denied that for centuries, and it was accepted as common sense until about five minutes ago. And so I really do think that Matt Walsh and Jeremy Boring need to have a conversation. And by that, I really mean the whole leadership team, however that's structured at the Daily Wire. Jeremy Boring just recently announced that they want to displace Disney as a conservative entertainment provider for your children. And almost before the announcement was finished, they released Jordan Peterson's first interview on the Daily Wire with Dave Rubin, speaking in sophisticated tones about the fruitlessness of sodomy and overcoming nature with technology and freezers full of breast milk. The Daily Wire has essentially announced that they too want to groom your children. They are not coming in the gaudy debauchery of drag queens, but rest assured they are coming in the sterile drag of intellectual complexity and queer refinement. The very same agnosticism that Matt Walsh rightly exposes and mocks on the question of what a woman is, Jordan Peterson and Dave Rubin exhibit in spades for over an hour on the same network on the topic of marriage and family. The very same incoherence that Matt exposes in the radical left is on display in high relief as Jordan Peterson repeatedly explains why what Rubin is doing doesn't really make sense and isn't really ideal, but society has decided to do anyway. Adding insult to injury. First off, and with all due respect for Dr. Peterson, who has done some incredibly helpful and courageous work, society has not decided to accept homosexual mirage. Rather, radical leftists have decided to attempt to shove that perversion down our throats. The same radical activist ideology that gave us Roe in 1973, purporting to grant the right to chop up little babies in their mother's wombs, is the same ideology that gave us Obergefell in 2015, claiming to overturn constitutional amendments in 30-some states that had duly defined marriage as one woman and one man, and they did so following a federal constitutional amendment known as the Defense of Marriage Act, signed into law, incidentally, by that champion of marital fidelity, Bill Clinton himself, and passed with enormous majorities in the House and Senate. No, Dr. Peterson, American society, through their elected officials, overwhelmingly opposed so-called homosexual marriage. And then it was foisted upon us like an ugly sweater on a poodle. But secondly, and even more importantly, it must be pointed out that whenever a word's meaning is expanded, the meaning of the word is either deepened or cheapened. Furthermore, and fundamentally, language comes from God as revelation from him about the true nature of the world and as a gift to us so that we might live in his world in an understanding and coherent way. I believe that Jordan Peterson and Dave Rubin would agree with me here when it comes to defining other fixed realities like north and south, green and red, up and down, and male and female. So long as you use language to correctly identify reality, the meaning of the words is only deepened and enriched. 
But if you begin adding contradictory notions to these words, you end up cheapening the words and you are attempting in effect, if not in fact, to destroy the reality. This is the case with the notion and definition of a woman. Every time a biological male claims to be a woman, he is not only lying, he is also insulting every true woman. And this is only intensified when the man goes through the trouble of getting castrated or breast implants. Whatever he does medically, he cannot become a woman. He cannot remake himself. He cannot undo his fundamental being, his DNA, his chromosomes, no matter how many hormonal cocktails are pumped into his body. And there's an important sense in which the more he does to himself in an attempt to become a woman, the more he is only adding insult to injury on multiple levels. The lies and insults of a crossdresser or drag queen are bad enough, but then they can change their clothes and remove their makeup and the overt insult is over, at least for the moment. But the hormones and surgeries magnify the insult to the extent that many other people are now helping them and great amounts of time, money, energy, and medicine is all being piled up in service of the insult to every true woman. Every step along the way is completely worthless. A biological male is never, in any sense, getting closer to becoming female. A woman is not the bare minimum of anatomical parts or chemicals. A woman is an immortal soul made in the image of the living God with a glory of a natural beauty flowing from her soul into every aspect of her life, together with the power of making and cultivating and glorifying life. You can never reach that glory with plastic surgeries and hormones. You can never even get close. This is like trying to build the Tower of Babel to reach up to heaven. When the Lord heard the commotion of that, quote, great civilization, it was still so infinitely infinitesimal compared to him that the scripture says that he had to come down to see what they were doing. And so it is with every woman compared to those males attempting to cross that infinite chasm. But to my main point here, it's the same thing with marriage. The same one who made them male and female is the one who defined marriage in the very same breath as, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together, let no man separate. Mark chapter 10 verses 6 to 9. Jesus said that the two go together. You cannot insist on male and female and then redefine marriage. Marriage is a created reality that is fixed. It is not a merely human institution. It's not a mere human contract. It is not merely an ancient tradition or custom. It is built into the fabric of reality. In the same way that male and female are fixed realities that cannot be bridged, cannot be faked, cannot truly be changed, neither can marriage. But the notion and glory of marriage certainly can be maligned, slandered, and insulted. What Jordan Peterson and Dave Rubin did on that opening episode for Daily Wire was a sophisticated exercise in shit-talking the glory of marriage. It was sophisticated, tidy, and a complete insult to every true marriage, including the marriage of Jesus and his church, the archetype of all true marriage. We've been informed by our overlords that donning blackface is the gravest sin. But if a man dresses up like a woman, we are repeatedly told that this is fun, sexy, brave, and enlightened. The N-word is derogatory, hateful, and so it is rightly banned from our vocabulary. But I don't think anyone has any idea just how hateful and derogatory this trans ideology is to men and women made in the image of God, or how hateful and derogatory this sodomite mirage is to marriage. But chances are good that I will get a lot more concerned emails from Christians about my use of the phrase shit-talking than the Daily Wire will get about their proposal to groom your children in the complexities of marriage and society. Conclusion. I've said previously that I am thankful for the work of the Daily Wire and, in all sincerity, God bless them. There is a gaping hole in the media landscape for non-woke people to simply embrace reality, love and tell the truth, fear God, and have some fun. But this means that discipleship is inescapable. Every media company, every news outlet, every podcast is arguing for a worldview that orients truth, goodness, and beauty. And my question for Jeremy Boring, Matt Walsh on The Daily Wire is, what will the Daily Wire children's shows teach about male and female and marriage? And will they be taught that what Dave Rubin is doing is evil, unnatural, and a rejection of God's created reality, or not?
While the Daily Wire and many conservatives rightly mocked Supreme Court Justice nominee Katanji Brown Jackson's refusal to answer the question, what is a woman? If the Daily Wire is not committed to teaching children that Dave Rubin is part of the problem, then the Daily Wire's silence is no better than Katanji Brown Jackson's, I'm not a biologist. And maybe it's actually worse. Because as Matt Walsh once said, our gutless cowardice on this very point is exactly what got us into this situation in the first place. Many have completely surrendered reality. The cowards are also the villains in this story. They need to be held accountable. If we know what is right, and we refuse to fight at that very point, then we are cowards, and we truly are in the process of joining the villains. Thanks for watching. I want to take a second to talk about my book, No Mere Mortals, Marriage for People Who Will Live Forever, and how you can listen to the audiobook that I read for just 99 cents. In recent decades, we have reduced marriage to a permanent roommate situation with sexual benefits. But the biblical picture of the family is something far more powerful, far more dangerous, far more glorious, far more like a nuclear reactor than anything else in modern society. I wrote No Mere Mortals to show how husbands can lead their wives, how wives can follow their husbands, and how both together, building on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ, can shape future generations and the world. The audiobook is now available at mycanonplus.com. If you haven't joined Canon Plus yet, you can get your first month for just 99 cents for using promo code TOBY99. mycanonplus.com, promo code TOBY99. Ninety nine.